back online after an arduous rebuild, we've got a lot to catch up on. Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Our new on-the-spot feature to drive your questions to MPs goes live. And double your dole. Eurocrats tell UK ministers current handouts are manifestly inadequate. And FKCU, the EU. Frustrated Newland says to Pyatt in alleged leaked phone call. Somerset flooding was an EU plan all along. And devastating US-EU trade pact would make genocide a legitimate business model. European Union chief wants to block undesirable content on the web. Plus, EU, a recipe to repeat horrors of 1930s. Dale told in debate on Bill changing constituencies. It's good to be back. Let's hope our critical systems failure isn't GCHQ or the NSA attempting to choke our popularity. Anyway, great to have you with us. It's Tuesday the 11th of February. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Our new on-the-spot feature to drive your questions to MPs goes live. Once a fortnight, you, our readers and viewers, get to provide a simple question which we will send as an email to UK MPs and MEPs, asking them for a straightforward answer. They can respond quickly and easily by clicking either yes or no buttons directly from within the email. This first question is to get a view from our representatives on fracking for shale gas. Now, as the debate heats up over the issue of fracking, the official party lines of the core political parties appear to stand in favour of fracking for shale gas. But constituents are cautious and concerned over environmental health and safety. But what is the position being taken by their political representatives? Our on-the-spot feature is poised to find out. So, how does it work? Well, we have developed a trackable email system that sends a simple email with the questions along with two huge buttons, yes and no. For our ministers, it is as simple as read the question in the email and click the button. It takes just a few seconds. Click either button takes the minister to a confirmation page where they can, if they wish, view the current results of our public poll and they can see supporting articles and view current results, which detail how the other ministers have voted. Our public poll already shows that the majority are so far against fracking. And if you haven't placed your vote yet, then please take a moment to do so using the links below. Double your dole, Eurocrats tell UK ministers current handouts are manifestly inadequate. Eurocrats sparked fury last night by ordering the UK to double dole payments. The Council of Europe claims the handouts given to Britain's jobless are manifestly inadequate. Ministers have been told they are in violation of the European Social Charter, potentially opening the door for claimants to take the government to court to get more money. But ministers say obeying the diktat from the Council, which oversees the controversial European Court of Human Rights, would cost the UK billions of pounds and plunge efforts to reduce the deficit into chaos. To comply, job seekers' allowance would have to be hiked by £71 from £67 to £138 a week. Last night, Work and Pensions Secretary Ian Duncan Smith accused the Council of Europe of lunacy. Wow, if the EU gets its way on this one, then the good folks on Benefit Street will be laughing all the way to the off-licence for another extra can of special brew. This article delves deeper into the numbers, but if you remember before we dramatically crashed off air last week, Alan Smith of Swanage Fish School Studies wrote into us with the UK Treasury's latest figures. What the EU is talking about here is roughly a 100% hike in benefits cost. Now, assume that goes across the board, which, once the legal precedence is set, then that is likely to happen. That could see public expenditure figures hit £1.5 trillion pounds by 2018-19. stroke well, Let's be clear about this one, folks. If the EU gets its way, then the already bankrupted UK is going to hell in a wooden colander. 
I deliberately wouldn't colander because they'll be bailing it out, bailing it in, and it will still be taking on water, and all the while going down in a ball of flames. KCU, the EU. Frustrated Newland says to Pyatt in alleged leaked phone call. In a conversation leaked online and posted to YouTube on February 4th, voices closely resembling those of US Ambassador to Ukraine Jeffrey Pyatt and US Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Newland discuss loosely the roles of Ukrainian opposition leaders and the United Nations and frustration over inaction and indecision by the European Union in solving Ukraine's political crisis. The woman, who sounds like Newland, can be heard on the recording saying the EU, while the man, who sounds like Payat, refers to Vitaly Klitschko as the top dog among opposition leavers, but implies Klitschko is too inexperienced to hold a top government post. Let's take a listen. What do you think? Uh, I think we're in play. Um, the the uh, Klitschko piece is obviously the complicated electron here, um, especially the announcement of him as Deputy Prime Minister, and, and you've seen some of my notes on the troubles in the marriage right now. So we're trying to get a read really fast on where he is on this stuff. But I think your argument to him, which you'll need to make, I think that's the next phone call we want to set up, is exactly the one you made to, to Yachts. And I, I'm glad you sort of put him on the spot on where he fits in this scenario. And I'm very glad he said what he said in response. Good. So uh, I don't think Cleach should go into the government. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you think what, in terms of him not going into the government, just let him sort of stay out and do his political homework and stuff. I'm just thinking in terms of sort of the process moving ahead, we want to keep the moderate Democrats together. The problem is going to be Tony Book and his guys. And, you know, I'm sure that's part of what Yanukovych is calculating on all of this. Um, I'm I, kinda, I, I just... I think Yatz is the guy who's got the economic experience, the governing experience. He's he's the guy, you know, what he needs is Cleach and Tony Book on the outside. He needs to be talking to them four times a week, you know. I, I, I just think Cleach going in, he's going to be at that level working for Yatz and Yuk. It's just not going to work. Yeah, no, I think, that's, you know? I think that's right. Okay, good. Well, do you want us to try to set up a call with him as the next step? My understanding from that call, but you tell me, was that the big three were going into their own meeting and that Yats was going to offer in that context a, a three-way, you know, the three plus one conversation or three plus two with you. Is that not how you understood it? No, I think, I mean, that's what he proposed. But I think just knowing the dynamic that's been with them where um, Klitschko has been the top dog, he's going to take a while to show up for whatever meeting they've got. and He's probably talking to his guys at this point. So, I think you reaching out directly to him helps with the personality management among the three, and it, and it gives you also a chance to move fast on all this stuff and put us behind it, behind it before they all sit down and he, um, he explains why he doesn't like it. Okay, good. I'm happy. Why don't you reach out to him and see if he wants to talk before or after? Okay, will do. Thanks. Okay, I've now written – oh, one more wrinkle for you, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember if I told you this or if I only told Washington this, that when I talked to Jeff Feltman this morning, he had a new name for the UN guy, Robert Seri. Did I write yeah. you that this morning? Yeah, okay. I saw that. He, he's now gotten both Seri and Ban Ki-moon to agree that Seri could come in Monday or Tuesday. Okay. So that would be great, I think, to help glue this thing and have the UN help glue it and, you know, fuck the EU. No, exactly. And I think we've got to do something to make it stick together because you can be pretty sure that if it does if it does start to gain altitude, the Russians will be working behind the scenes to try to torpedo it. And again, the fact that this is out there right now, I'm still trying to figure out in my mind why Yanukovych did that. But in the meantime, there's a party of regions faction meeting going on right now, and I'm sure there's a lively argument going on in that group at this point. But uh, anyway, we could uh, we could land jelly side up on this one if we move fast. So let me work on let me work on Klitschko, and if you can just keep, I, I think we want to try to get somebody with an international personality to um, come out here and help to midwife this thing. And then the other the other issue is some kind of outreach to Yanukovych, but we probably regroup on that tomorrow as we see how things start to fall into place. 
So on that piece, Jeff, uh, when I wrote the note, uh, Sullivan's come back to me, uh, VFR, saying you need Biden, and I said probably tomorrow for an attaboy and to get the deets to stick. So okay. Biden's willing. Okay, great. All right. Thanks. Now, the links that we got sent had already been taken down by YouTube, and we had to search around a little to get a copy. So somebody doesn't want this getting out. What this demonstrates is the machinations of this totalitarian machine at work. That we have a US senator working at UN level, trying to manipulate national democracy wholesale. I for one tell you this, no more will I feel unsure that our political elite are conspiring globally against the people. This clearly is a globalist takeover, with UN Agenda 21 as the catalyst, more on that particular point later in the show but more so that the EU is and has been constructed as part of the overall plan. Just to solidify this whole idea, I want to recommend a video to you, created by LaRouche Political Action Group. This video explains the geopolitical agenda over the last 100 years. It is fascinating stuff, and it demonstrates just how the state and education system twists the records of history to suit its own agenda. Somerset flooding was an EU plan all along. The European Union intended for the Somerset levels to flood, claims political commentator and blogger Richard North. Mr North runs his Defence of the Realm and EU referendum blogs and was a former research director in the European Parliament. It is all very well for Chris Smith, chairman of the Environment Agency, to prattle on about difficult choices and to tell us that more must be done to protect the Somerset levels. But in the flooding crisis over which he is presiding, there is one which Smith's agency at the behest of the EU deliberately allowed to happen. Allowing the flooding is a matter of EU policy, introduced by a 2007 directive and consciously adopted by the Environment Agency in 2008, which then sought to increase the frequency of flooding on the Somerset levels. What then makes it impossible for the people on the spot, like Owen Patterson, is that they are having to deal with decisions made years ago. Only now are the consequences of those decisions becoming evident, while the people, or agencies, who contributed to this disaster are entirely invisible. In the invisible class is that classic elephant in the room, the European Union which was behind the last great change in British strategy, heralded by a DEFRA consultation document in July 2004 called Making Space for Water, introducing a new government strategy for flood and coastal erosion risk management in England. Now, the article drills further into this issue, and Richard North's blog, eureferendum.org, carries the full article along with the supporting regulations and EU directives. But here is an even deeper thought for you. The United Nations Rio Summit, which created Agenda 21, has been accepted as policy guide by the EU. Its agenda is to move people off the land and to have them live in what it calls urban centres, essentially cities. Part of this strategy is to return lands back to their natural state and even to ban public access in those areas altogether that then would be surrounded by a buffer zone where limited human access is allowed. This is what is meant by the term making space for water. The policy is simply to re-flood the Somerset levels and return it to salt marsh. Somerset is not the only area under threat by these policies. Norfolk and many other coastal areas along with high upland moors are being targeted too. Meanwhile, of course, the Royal Navy has been called in to assist flooded villagers on the Somerset levels. <music> Devastating US-EU trade pact would make genocide a legitimate business model. The United States and the European Union are negotiating a free trade agreement they hail as mutually beneficial, but in actuality would allow corporations to supersede countries, sovereignty and legal framework, says Max Kaiser of RT's The Kaiser Report. Now, the US and EU transatlantic free trade agreement, TAFTA, aims to hand foreign corporation ways to evade domestic laws and courts while giving them the ability to sue the countries for compensatory damages from the economies that they've just devastated, Kaiser told RT. 
It gives all the power to the entities that have destroyed the European economy, the big banks that have gutted the European economy, Kaiser said. Closed-door talks for the agreement started in July and will ultimately create an investor-state system in which regulatory structures on both sides of the Atlantic are weakened for the profit-seeking motives of mainly American corporate entities. Now, interestingly to me, this ties in with a little reported move by the UK government to acquire all UK citizens' medical records for use by the state. Check this out. Apparently... Your medical records could be sold to the highest bidder, but not if we can stop it. Now, starting this year, private companies will be able to buy information on us from the NHS's new universal patient database, including everything from mental health conditions, sexually transmitted infections and diseases like cancer, all linked to your postcode, gender and ethnicity. Now, we've all been opted into the scheme by the government without our knowledge, and the clock is ticking. The government has said they will upload our private data in a matter of just a few weeks. And if we're going to stop this, we have to act now. Now, at the time of writing this article, the petition was at 211,629, and the goal is to get 250,000. So let's see if we can help them get there. EU DEF wants to block undesirable content on the internet. More totalitarian tiptoe from the power crazed kleptocrats. Not content with giving themselves free access to every citizen's health records, they want to restrict our free access to information on the internet. Now, I have been talking about this on this show for almost two years now, and all the legislation is there on our website in the legislation archives for you to go and look at. Yesterday, the new European Union anti-terror chief appeared in front of MPs to discuss various issues, including what people are reading online. As we've previously warned, the UK's anti-extremism task force has already alluded to greater filtering of web content, and now the EU has taken it one step further, with Gilles de Cherkov telling MPs he wanted to remove not illegal, undesirable websites. Setting out the action being taken by the EU, he said, the Commissioner for Home Affairs will set up a forum to discuss with the big players, Google, Facebook and Twitter, how we can improve the way one removes from the internet the illegal, and if not illegal, then undesirable, websites. Now, there's more depth in the article on our website, but in a nutshell, folks, they are going to take away our rights to free access to information. Now, as a technician, let me assure you that if you want to lock out content from the internet to protect your family or organisation, there are hundreds of companies beating a path to your door with solutions to do it. Just put internet proxy and content filtering into Google. Now, personally, I recommend OpenDNS, as their service blocks everything at their end of the connection, so you know you're safe. The bottom line on this one is there is no need for the government to interfere with the internet and no one wants them to. But they're going to use their politics to sell the idea that it's necessary for the good of the people, when in truth, it's for the good of themselves. EU a recipe to repeat horrors of the 1930s, Dale told in debate on bill-changing constituencies. So the European Union, as it is developing, is a recipe to repeat the horrors of the 1930s and the 1940s, the Dale has heard. Independent TD Richard Boyd Barrett pointed to the frightening growth of far-right, openly neo-Nazi parties around Europe, parading the streets and engaging in vicious racial violence and articulating the sort of obnoxious views that were articulated by the Nazis and the fascists of the 1930s and 1940s. Mr Boyd Barrett was speaking during a debate on legislation which reduces the number of Irish MEPs from 12 to 11 and changes the composition of the constituencies for the European elections, which takes place this year on May 23rd. He said the pretense of democracy the European Parliament represented belies the actuality of the EU, which is diktat from the European Central Bank and the European Commission and their pals in the IMF. The situation unfolding in Europe was a repeat of the 1930s, but in slow motion. 
We have an economic crisis, a political center that has become completely discredited, dangerous forces of the far right beginning to emerge on the margins, and widespread disaffection and disillusionment with political institutions among ordinary citizens. The reduction in the number of seats and changes to constituencies made the situation worse, he said. Now, I made mention of the LaRouche Pack documentary, Who Needs Washington? And I urge you to watch this, just to give you a taster. Did you know that it was us, the British, that brought about and conspired to create the setting for the First World War? Well, it was actually our honourable royalty through Edward VII and his nephew, Kaiser Wilhelm. Did you know that the City of London and the UK banks funded the campaign that brought Adolf Hitler to power in 1933? Well, if your answer to those questions is no, then your next stop should be the Unit UK video library. The links are below. Now remember to visit our website at theunituk.com for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>